Hi, how's it going? My name is Carl Diaz. I'm with the Learning Resources Center at the University of Colorado Denver. Today we're going to be talking about a kinematics problem here. I've got a physics checklist written out for you. I'm not going to always have that, but I have it so you know how to walk through here. Um, so let's get started. First thing you want to do is read the question and understand what it's asking you. So this is an archer fish spice a meal of a grasshopper sitting on a long stalk of grass at the edge of a pond. If the fish is successfully spit and strike the grasshopper, which is 0.20 meters away and 0.525 meters above his mouth, what is the minimum speed and angle the fish must spit? <laughs> so, uh, or must the fish spit? There we go. Sorry about that. Angle must the fish spit. Probably not the name. I couldn't get it wrong. <laughs> all right. So what's it asking us for? Minimum velocity. What? What is it? That's all great and grand, but you need to make more than that. You make more of it than that. You can't just say that because. Minimum speed, what, where, here, there, where, where? So when they say, what is the minimum speed, they're asking for that initial velocity. You need to understand that before you move past the read part. Because you don't understand the question unless you know. You just think, oh, what's the velocity? That's incorrect. You have to know initial velocity is what they're asking you for. All right, so they're asking us for initial velocity, right? Which is important to put in here. I didn't put the question in there, but there we go. All right, so step one's done. Now let's do the givens. All right, the givens are just what is in the question and then things that we may know just because of the physics concepts that we understand, right? So we know that it's 0.200 meters away, and we also know that uh, it's 0.525 meters, I don't know how many meters it in there, I don't know why, uh, above its mouth, all right? So that's what we were given. We were given those two things, right? But uh, we know a little bit more, right? We know the acceleration in the Y is due to gravity, right? The rate of change in motion of this water as it leaves the fish to hit that uh, fly is gonna be, uh, it's the rate of change in motion is gonna be 9.8 meters per second squared, right? And we also know that the acceleration in the X is zero, right? I mean, we're ignoring air resistance. There won't be much. This is a very small distance this is traveling. So we're ignoring air resistance, or ignoring air resistance, we can say the acceleration in the x is going to be zero, very minimum. Why are we saying the velocity, the final velocity in the y is zero? Because it sure as heck isn't because it hits the, the fly. You can't think that, right? The final velocity isn't because it hits the fly, right? It's going to be moving all the way up until uh, the very last moment, right, of the of the water or something. So you got to think about that. You're not you're not we're not saying final velocity in the y, okay? Because it hits the fish. We're saying final velocity in the y is because we're assuming that it's going to reach the peak. Do we know? No, but we're going to use it as a reference to help us solve this. We're going to say as this as the water hits that fly, it's going to reach its peak height, and we know at the peak height of anything, the velocity in the y is zero. Okay, and if you don't understand that, go watch the velocity or, or the, the kinematics video that we made and it explains all those in there and why that is. So again, the velocity, final velocity is zero because that's what happens. The final velocity in the Y is gonna be zero right before the water starts to head down and we're using that as a reference point. And again, we need to know the initial velocity total, right? I'm not right X or Y here because it's the total that we're looking for. All right. So next is a free body diagram. Again, free body diagrams are for forces. We don't have forces here. There's one force, right? We can draw the spit and draw the mg on it if you want. And you could do something like this and say, okay, well, that has some sort of mg. That's all good and grand, but that's the only part of the free body diagram that would be there. But you still need a picture, right? Even though there aren't forces here, you need to know what's going on, right? We're talking about the velocity being shot like velocity has components if we knew that velocity and that angle we could we could solve for those components right away if, if we needed them uh, um, in order to get this but if we have that value we wouldn't need that so again I just write these because we know that that's one way to write the components of of uh, this vector is there other ways to get them definitely definitely but we know that these are going to be uh, exactly what uh, we need in terms of solving for these. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to uh, 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 get started here. So we, we have our, our V initial, we know the theta, we know these are the components. Um, so 
So let's go ahead and, and, uh, and we, what we can see, right, is in order to get this, we need these components. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get it. If we knew the angle, right, we could, we could, we could do it a lot of different ways, but we don't know a lot of things in there, so let's do it a different way. So, write down the equations that go with the concepts, okay? Well, we wanna know the concepts. Sorry, I'm skipping the step of the concepts. So we know that this is just talking about motion. Sorry, I didn't mean to skip that, but it's a very, straightforward thing. There's not, nothing here. We don't know about forces or anything. So there's no Newton law concepts to talk about here. There's no, right, circular motion or anything like this. Uh, we do know that it's a projectile motion, right? This is a type of projectile, right? So projectile motion will come. That's a concept here, projectile motion. But we know projectile motion sits in with the idea of kinematics. We're just describing the motion of this. Water is all we're wanting to do. So we know kinematics is a way to go. So we know that, 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 that those are the equations that we'll need. So we'll write those down uh, here, which is what happened, right? So we wrote down all the equations that we would need, right? We got the final velocity for the y. We got the change in y here and change in x here. Now, again, you may not know you need all these until you get to that point. So I'm going to kind of talk about it in that way. You may not know to write this equation right away. You may need to know if you need so that you have something first. So we'll go about that. So you start here, right? We know we have a lot of information in our y. I know the acceleration of my y, the velocity, final velocity in the y, my displacement in the y. So I want to start with an equation, my kinematics equation in the y, because it'll, it'll give me a good place to start, all right? So again, we want the initial velocity in the y, we want the initial velocity in the x. If we can get those things, we can get that total, right? So what we do is we go ahead and we we solve for it as such. So we start with the final velocity. Then we know the initial velocity, right? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I see what happened here, and I apologize for that. Um, it's the final velocity that's going to be zero here. I see that I wrote zero for the initial. Okay, so that's what we know. Okay. And... Right? So once we have that zero in there, that'll drop off and we'll bring our initial velocity over right, to the other side. And then that 2a will also pick up a negative because we know that the acceleration, right, that g, it's in the negative direction. It's in the negative y. So you want to change that. That acceleration won't stay positive. This is positive as the equation writes it, right, as we write the equation, but the acceleration is pointing in the negative, the g, right? We know this is the, the, the acceleration is this way, all right? And so we know that that's downward, which is gonna take on a negative sign because of the direction it's pointing, right? So that will take on a negative sign, and when we bring this vi over, viy over, that will also take on a negative sign. Now we know because of those two negative signs, they'll cancel, right? And because of the square root, we'll wanna do the the square root of both sides. So I kind of, again, you want to do these steps in your head. You want to be able to go from here to here. You want to go step by step by step by step, okay? It's really a slow process when you do it that way. So as you can see, again, I canceled out my negatives. Again, the negative got brought onto this because this moved over to this side. And this got a negative because of the sign. Cancel those negatives out and then did the square root of both sides, getting rid of that square on this side and then square rooting this side. And then that's your final equation. Now, I did this in two ways. I gave you all the written using just the variables because a lot of times your professors will just ask you for an equation. They might not ask you uh, for like a final answer. Um, but I also wrote the values in here. We'll do that all the time just so that you know because it is kind of a complicated question here. So just so that you have an idea of what we're getting and the numbers that we're getting. So again, that's our initial velocity in the y. Right here, um, that's what you should be getting for your number, but this is the equation for it. All right, so the next thing we know is that time, and if you don't remember this, go watch the kinematics pro uh, uh, video, but we know time binds x to y. We know that, binds the x velocities to y velocities, it binds x displacements to y displacements. So what we did is we went ahead and said, okay, well, let's get an equation for t, because if we know t, t, if we know the time and the y, we can get uh, we can use that for the time in the x and maybe be able to do something with that. So again, 
Why did we do this? How did we know that the next step was to solve for t? It was because we need to bind our y velocity to our x. The only way to bind the y velocity to the x is through time, right? It's the only way to do that. Time will be the same for both. So we, we, we chose this equation, right, which is a change in the y. Right? It's the average velocity uh, equation, right? Change of y, one half vfy plus viy um, times t. Okay, and then we know that the VFY is zero. Again, we talked about why that is. We filled that in right here. And then we went ahead and wrote this equation with that zero out, right? And brought the two over. So we brought this two over, so two times Y. And we dropped that zero to leave just the VIY and the T there. And that's what we have written there. And then we went ahead and solved for T, which is just bringing that VIY underneath there which is what we did here. And then we went ahead and solved for it, right? We know all these variables. So again, you can put those numbers in there. Uh, I wouldn't, I would actually wait. And as you can see, I don't have a number for you here because we just go ahead and throw that equation in down here, but you can, you can get a number here and then go, go on and put it in down here, however you want to do it. But I did just leave the equation for this one. So again, I just solve for time because time will bind X to Y and I use the time and the Y because I have the most information. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, as you can see, this VIY, right, is coming in here. I wouldn't have been able to do this unless I actually found this. So also keep that in mind. This VIY comes in here, which as you can see is right there, all right? So next is we need to then get our initial velocity in the X. Again, those are the things we're actually looking for, right? And with time, we know we could do that, right? So we start with the, again, we start with this equation, uh, one of our kinematics equations, which is the displacement in the x is equal to the initial velocity in x times t plus one half at squared, all right? And then we know the acceleration in the x is zero, right? So we put that in, right? And then it fell away. All at zero times one half at squared, that is zero, right? So all we should have left from this equation is change in x times vix times t is exactly what we have. Then again, we're looking for the initial velocity in the x. We want to solve this equation for the initial velocity in the x, which is the change in x over t. We have these values, right? We know the displacement in the x. We know t, right? Here's this equation. So I went ahead and put that together, right? There's change in x over this t. Just put that right in there. And then here's the number. So once you get all those numbers in there, that's what you should get for initial velocity in the x. All right, so we got both initial velocity in the x and in the y, right? There's two, there's two ways to look at it, right? We know that this is v initial in the x. We know this is v initial in the y. We're using these, right? We're gonna get these two values. We did that, right? V initial in the y, v initial in the x. So now, in order to bind these two components, right, which is what we have, we use Pythagorean theorem. You should know that. That's how it's done. That should be always your next step. You should always use it, have that as a go-to. So as we can see, Pythagorean theorem is this is going to be v total, and I don't have it right written there, but probably should. All right, it's going to be equal to the initial velocity in the x squared plus initial velocity in the y squared, all right? And we want to fill those in. Again, I used equations because your professor might ask for you, ask you to do it this way. If not, you can just, you know those numbers, v i y, right? You know these numbers. You know these numbers, all right? So that can just go in there, right? This can just go in there. This is the answer, okay? So this is what you should get as a total. Your total velocity, when you have, when you use the math here, and just use these two numbers, right, and square them in there, you should get this number as your final velocity. So that's the minimum velocity right there, 3.27 meters per second that this fish needs to spit to hit that fly. And then the angle is based off that velocity. So then we want to make sure that we use the inverse tangent. We start with tangent. Why do we use tangent? In case you're not too sure, tangent is opposite over adjacent. We know that, and we have the opposite and adjacent vector. We have those values, so we can get that angle. And that's what we do here. We bring tangent over, so inverse tangent, and then Vy, right, is just this equation in here. Vix is just this equation in here. All right, now again, you can just use these numbers. Viy, right, you can just put 3.28 up here. 0.611 down here, all right? Make sure you do the inverse of tangent, hit enter in your calculator, and you should get 
a theta of 79.2 degrees, all right? And that's the angle at which it needs to spin. All right, well, I hope this made sense. I hope this was clear. If not, watch it over and over. It's the point of the video is to be able to watch over and over, get it down, and understand why we did what we did. Because as you can see, it wasn't math, it wasn't mathy, mathy, mathy. A lot of these variables, a lot of things changed because of the physics, what we knew about acceleration, velocities, things like this, okay, from the concepts. Alrighty. Uh, very, very proud of you. Keep working very hard, and I'll see you on the next video.